Hey what's up guys, welcome back to my channel, this is Sheldon. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to classify cats and dogs with PyTorch. First thing first, this video is proudly sponsored by... Um, let me just check on that. Oh, that is so mean! Can't believe that. Oh, never mind, let's go on. Uh, okay. Classifying cats and dogs can be super easy for human beings, obviously, but if you say you want to program a computer to do the same job for you, it would be super difficult. Because even if you can create a smart algorithm to detect, let's say, um, the dog's nose are generally bigger and longer than a cat's nose, there are still too many possibilities in an image. Let's say on the left side, there is a cat upside down, so you have to increase the complexity of your algorithm to detect this change. So here's where CNN comes. With the help of convolutional neural network, you don't have to explicitly tell the computer the difference between cats and dogs. Instead, you just have to feed enough the images of cats and dogs into the CNN, and it will automatically generate the correct neural network structure to match the specific problem. So in the first episode, I'm gonna be teaching guys how to find images and organize them to uh, get ready for the training. So what we have to do is open up Google and I'm gonna recommend this website to you, ImageNet. We type in ImageNet. This is the website, you can find all sorts of images here. And we gonna click the refresh button and now we type in cat. Okay, we click the first one here. And you can see that there is a download button on the right side and you click the arrows and it will show up lots of arrows to the images of cats and you can see one of them you can see that there is a cat lying on the ground and now we're gonna download all of this manually okay I'm just kidding what we have to do is to use Python to download it which will definitely make our life better so first thing first let's open up PyCharm okay uh, let's create a project called tutorial. You don't have to follow me. You just create whatever you want. Democracy, right? My favorite. Okay. Let's create this download data script. And first thing, we have to import the most important package, which is a building library. Erlib. Mm, actually, we're gonna uh, import the request module from the Erlib. Okay, let's define a function to get the Erlib from this website. Okay, let's say get list, and because we're getting uh, the list from that URL, so we defined a param called URL. And actually, what we have to do is to import the request function from the request module in the URL lib. Okay. And before everything happens, we have to specify what kind of request we want. So let's say mm, request item. Okay, request item equals request. Okay, let's type in the, let's put in the URL. Okay, now we need a variable for receiving the response when we open up the URL. 
So let's say response. Uh, and we're gonna import one more function, which is called Earl open to open up the Earl. We're gonna type in request item, and now we get the response. What we have to do is actually uh, read from the response so that we can get our list. Okay, one important thing is when we read the data out of the response, it's usually encoded and it's usually encoded with the method utf slash a, so we have to decode it. Okay, so now we return our content. Okay, and now we're gonna get the content from this URL. Okay, and then we're gonna print it out. So now we can see that uh, there are a bunch of URLs and we click on one of them. You can see that there's a cat on the screen so everything works fine. But if you look carefully into this so-called list, you can you, you, you will notice that that is not actually a list. This is actually some a bunch of strings. So what we have to do is to split it up into actual uh, list so our program can get access to any of them. We're gonna split it with this symbol. Ta-da! Now we can we get our actual list. But you can see that th there is this guy here, so we're gonna split up with with it as well. And now we're gonna delete these two lines and say divide a another function called get image from URL list and we're gonna define the first param as URL list and the second is folder and we're gonna put the list get from the first function into the second function so uh, we're gonna define a base folder called data because we're gonna put all our data into this folder and uh, most important thing is because we don't know if we have already had a folder call data and we're gonna use the exist function from the OS path to check if this folder exists and also we need the make directory function in the OS and we're gonna check it and we're gonna make it if it does not exist Okay, we have to make the folder for containing cats and dogs, the images of cats and dogs. Uh, okay, we have to check if it exists again and make the directory. So before this, we have to join these two folders together so that it can make the appropriate directory. Okay, now we have to loop through the URL list and get images from each of them. Okay, now we are gonna use the URL lib again to get our image. We're gonna use this URL to with this request item and get a response from this request item using URL open and we're gonna retrieve the data and here because we're getting an image we don't have to decode it and we're gonna write it on our disk and we're gonna say with open and here is a little bit complicated we have to join the path together 
so that we can write in the correct directory and we have to assign different names for each images so how are we gonna do that well we can use different numbers to represent each images but how can we get different numbers each time when when we look through the URL list let me just finish this part well here's WB means we have to write binds into this file and simply we just type in write and write a content that we can we get from the response in case we get any errors from this part we use try and exception pair to avoid such problems and we're gonna accept n exceptions so this program will run no matter what exception it gets and here if you prefer you can also bring out the exception reason well this part is optional you can just skip it and we say continue so it will it will continue to run no matter what exception it has so what we're doing now is importing this TQD M library which is a good indicator for indicating the progress of our code during runtime so we're gonna type in how many images we have here another reason that I use TQDM is it has a variable n to show the number of the current image so we can use that to name our image so now we are gonna make our program perfect we're gonna import arc parse to parse our params into the program when we run it And here we're gonna say our one of our param is called um, Earl and it is a string so we're gonna copy this and to name the second param is called folder and we're gonna parse our arguments into this variable and we simply say we want to get the list using the URL from the argument and we're gonna use the the URL list as the first param in the get image function and the second param should be the folder in the argument so that there is one more thing we have to pay attention here after we get the image we have to update the indicator here so so now everything is fine. Let's test our program. Uh, okay, here's a typo. This happens a lot. Let's try it again. Okay, looks like we have a new problem. Okay, let's 
correct this. Okay, let's delete it. Okay, now everything works fine. We can see that under data and cat folder, we can see that there are images that we download from the image net. And you can use this script to download the docs images by simply changing this URL address and this folder. This is the end of this episode. Please hit the thumbs up if you find it helpful and subscribe if you're interested in the following episodes. This is Sheldon. Hope to see you later. Bye.